Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Stefan here from uh, Mikey's channel. Looking forward to discuss with you this morning the advance in budgeting for Sage Intact. So just by from an agenda perspective, what we're going to do and, and discuss with you today is why Martis? Maybe there are some of you already using it. Maybe some of you that just want to see what it's all about. So we'll discuss a bit about that. And then we're going to go into live demonstrations. You go which I'm sure a fair bit of you will know who that is as well. We'll do the demonstration and walk through the product for us. Um, we will then have a Q&A towards the, the end um, of the session as well. So maybe just a bit on, on why Smartis and the purpose for, for, for the session today is the fact that Smartis is the Sacing Tech Marketplace Partner. Um, so what comes with that is the assurance that it's an integration certified by Sage. It's just an add-on product, so nothing else to do. There's no development involved. It's 100% integrated out of the box with Sage Intact. The integration is, is basically the accounts and the, and the budget. So once you're finishing finish your budget process within Martis, you will then uh, that will feed through to Sage Intact, which you can obviously use your reporting for actual versus budget. Uh, accounting um, as such. Um, it's uh, one bigger uh, benefits of the product is the collaboration tool. Um, so in other words, you can uh, use the product to, when it comes to the time to do your budget, to collaborate with managers and other employees within the organization um, as such, um, until you arrive at the final budget that you then can lock in uh, to Martis, and then that will then update Sage uh, with the final budget that you have arrived with. Apart from that as well, it, it has uh, advanced formulas built into it um, to assist with your budget calculations, something like headcount, um, things like square metrics you can use as well. You can also determine to, to create a budget for a specific expense in relation to a percentage of income. Um, so really adding those additional formulas to assist with the process of, of uh, making budgeting easier. Just included personal budgeting as well, which comes with all the security around it. Um, obviously a very sensitive area, but you can budget to the lowest detail level per employee and obviously all that can roll up into just one budgeting figure. So the main aim is really less Excel. Um, although you can still use Excel to import information into Martis, the whole idea is, is to use this tool to replace your Excel activities um, and really use the worksheets within Martis to, to send to managers, have the process until you arrive at the final, final budget um, as such. So with that in mind, I think I'll, I'll hand over to, to Hugo to get into the product for us. Uh, which is uh, the most important part. Uh, feel free during the, the demonstration, if you want to ask a question somewhere, you can use the, the question panel uh, to do so. And we will then at the end of the, of the demonstration, just uh, go through and, and answer those questions uh, for you guys. But yes, yeah, sit back, relax and uh, in, enjoy the demonstration. Thanks, Hugo. Yeah, thanks, Stefan. Good day, everyone. Yeah, so I'll basically take you through the product itself. There's a couple of steps, as we mentioned in the agenda. We'll go through, you know, some of the, the welcome notes that we've got here, then go into the planning tool and just explain how that works and how that basically integrates back to Intact, um, as well as the personnel batching there at the end, just to show you um, what we've got available there. So from a welcome perspective, uh, the same as with Intact, there are quite a few updates that Modest can bring out. And on the screen there, you can see if there's any updates, they'll, they'll bring through those release notes as well and show you or give you just some visibility of those, those highlights that comes in. Uh, additional feature that I normally find interesting as well is just these little tips that they, they provide as well. So as you can see there, each time you get in, there'll be a new tip or you can just flick through to, to some of the other tips. And you know, just setting up a scenario there, showing what it looks like, you know, some of the options that you've got available, and then they've got a few, you know, guides and videos as well, tutorials on, on how to achieve this. So quite comprehensive in that sense as well, just to assist you with the process of, you know, whatever that tip is about, in this case, creating a forecast in, in Martis or 
you know, going to one of their new ones, there's financial projections across multiple years. So these type of things are, are available out the box and you know, there's just some tips on how to use them. From the budget info, you can see on the, on the right hand side here as well, there's a couple of things. So you know, mine, the last closed month is October 2019 and I can change it from there. So from a budgeting perspective, it just tells us where we are within, the, within our, our periods as well. And it tells us what, what that default budget year is. So at this stage, you know, I've basically completed some of 2019 already, but we're in the budget year for 2019. So that's where we'll create our budgets. And then the, the default plan and budget that you see there and the dashboard as well, those are the ones that's by default loaded. So when we look at something or when we load a worksheet, those are the default uh, budget code that we'll use to update and then send back to Intact as well. Alrighty. Now, if we if we go to the next section, I think the the biggest part there. We use Intact for reporting generally, and we recommend that as well. However, Martis does have a number of dashboards and some reports in there as well. So for the budget holders and you know people working on the budget throughout the process, we do have that facility to run some reports in there. So there's a little dashboard. Uh, there is a you know a normal PL income statement as they call it as well uh, that you've got available showing you where we are. So based on that default period that we've got available, so that's October 19, you can see as we're in there, that's basically got the actuals up until that date and then the budgets going forward as well, uh, year to date, actual budget and, and variance as well. So the, the important thing just to note here as well, as, men, as Stefan mentioned, it is a marketplace partner and that integration is there by default. I'll show you some of the integrations shortly as well, but in essence, we bring through the actuals. So they've got visibility of the actuals as well when either preparing the budgets or looking at these reports. So that's quite a, quite a key feature there as well. Now, when you look at the integration, as we mentioned, is it is automated. So there's a couple of things from a from a chart of accounts, location, cost center project. So any of those dimensions that you might use in Intact, when we set up Martis initially, we will basically allow you to make that selection. Which of those dimensions do you use for budgeting purposes? And that will be available then throughout the process as well. So in my case, I've I've had basically the location cost center, and then also added the projects on a on a line level so we can see what that looks like. So from an integration point of view, you do have the ability to run, you know, I want some monthly updates. So we can say, I want to quickly do a, you know, October month sync and bring that through. Um, you can see from the help there as well, this is something that runs nightly and it does the current month and the previous two months. So every night it'll basically update the current month and the prior two months so that that actual information that's displayed within Martis is up to date. If there's something that, that's quite urgent, you need to view it now, you can do that manual update whenever as well. And the other options there, chart of accounts, all of these updates during, during that process, but you do have the ability to run that sync. You can see the location sync queued and it will actually complete that as well. Uh, from a from a queue perspective, you can always look at the completed tasks as well. So if there's anything that you want to look at, you can see, you know, if everything completed. So there's location, department, project, and account sync that happened, weekly syncs, and the actual monthly syncs that happened as well. So, you know, that's always there uh, to refer back to if there's anything that you need to look at as well. Alrighty. Now, the the biggest component once we've got the information within Mars is to, to start doing our planning and, and what are we going to send out to the users. So there's a couple of setups that's available. Uh, I won't go through all of them in, in this session, but you know, single sign on email setup, we can set up the users and roles. So we need to set up specific users and roles for what they can access within Martis. There's obviously some options that, that we can do in there. And then if there's any dashboards and reports that they want um, or need access to, we can allow that as well. Uh, some dimensions, and even on accounts. So as we said, the accounts are default. They they structured and or sync through automatically. Generally, the PL accounts, but as you can see there from a bank account perspective, because we bring through the cash balances as well, um, we've activated those and, and locked them. So if there's any balance sheet accounts that you need to budget on as well, you can activate them. So if we look at you know all of our inactive accounts, we can take any of these balance sheet accounts activate them 
and, and lock it so that we don't override it again to say it's, it needs to be inactive and then have those available to, to budget on as well. So if, if you ever need to do that on, on you know, balance sheet accounts. So from a setup perspective, that's the, the main setups we require. But generally when we go into our, our planner setup, that's where we generate the worksheets and that's the important part here. So we can set up a budget or different budget versions that we're working with. So you can see in, in my instance, within my plan is set up, I've got the actual budget that I'm working with, and that's also set as, as my defaults. So that's the planner default, the default and the dashboards, and non-admins can view it as well. But we can also create other you know, forecasts or other budget versions that we, we want to implement as well or budget on and, and sync that through to Intact. So those we can bring in and you can see as well, you know, from that rights perspective, they're not default but non-admins can view that one, but not the other one. So you've got that ability to create multiple budgets within, within Martis then as well, which we'll, we'll use to, to generate the budget. Now, within each of these work uh, or budgets, we can have specific worksheets. So I'll open up our worksheet manager. And based on the dimension selections that we had, you can see at this stage, I've used my location and cost center or department as the main drivers for my budget. So these are the, the default locations and cost centers that will come through from Intact. If there is something that we haven't budgeted for, we can always you know, add another worksheet in there and say, you know, this is for a particular location. So we'll take that entity 650. You know, we take our admin department. I'll talk about those two now and we can add that worksheet. So once that's added, you can see there at the bottom that's been created and now available. Now, the collaboration and the utility to send this to particular users within the, the application comes with the owners and the approvers. So for each of these worksheets, we can actually allocate who the owner is. So who's the, the budget holder of this one? Who's responsible for admin in that Australian property company that I have? We can assign that owner in there and then also who the approver is so that we know um, when, when the budget gets finalized who needs to approve that who needs to send it back to intact for us okay so that's the important part there for us um, from from that perspective as we mentioned we still have the ability to import so you know we can create a new budget or import into existing budget so those type of files are available we can manage our archive budgets and we can also set that budget here that we spoke about initially that 2019 that we saw on the screen there so a couple of things just around that plan is set up that we've got there as well now, once we've established our, our worksheets and created all the worksheets we need and allocated the users that require those worksheets, we need to have them log in and actually go and populate these sheets for, for us. So what that looks like is if we go into the worksheets on the left-hand side there, you can see the number of worksheets that has been created. And each user, I'm logged in as an admin, so I can see all the sheets that's available. But for the users, uh, the non-admin users, they will only see the ones that's assigned to them as an owner. So if it was only assigned to me, I would only see that one particular budget worksheet at this stage. And as well, if I'm an approver, once something is submitted, I'll only see you know that particular workbook once it's submitted from, to me as an approver as well. So those are things to, to keep in mind as well. It's not open to everyone. It's just the admins that see everything. The user can only see what they've got access to. Now, when we look at particular at the workbook itself, I'll edit one and show you what it looks like. So initially, when this opens up, and I'll open up in our 2.0 worksheet, so there is an update and that's something you can switch to as well. So if anyone um, decides to go to models, that'll be the new look that you will work with when this, this comes up as well. So from a loading perspective initially, it shows us at the top there 2018 actuals and budgets on these accounts. So that's our starting point. So we've got our prior actuals and the budgets if we haven't actually got any actuals in there. Uh, so you can see what the actuals is, what our budget was, and we can see how that, that played out. Now, from our perspective at the bottom, this is what we need to generate. So we need to create our new budget to be able to you know, populate our budget for 2019. So this is the worksheet at the bottom that will populate and basically work on our budget. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. When, when we start the process, 
Um, there's a number of things that we can do. So from a worksheet action, so this is something that happens across the entire worksheet, we can load or initialize a budget, uh, we can round it, we can lock it, you know, export it, import it. So there's a number of things you can do there. From a line level, you can see we can add some lines. So, you know, basically this budget structure that we have at the bottom is loaded based on the budget that we had the previous year and any actuals on it. So there might be new accounts that was added or new cost centers that were added. So any of those type of things might not exist on that budget line. So if we add a new line, we can physically choose, you know, what we want to enter there that's not there currently. So importantly, if something is, I'm going to say, missing from your budget, you can add that line in there as well. Uh, there are options to, to initialize the budget. So when we create this budget, you do have the ability to say, you know what, look at last year's actuals and bring that through. Or look at last year's budget, bring that through. Or look at, you know, either of them again, but bring that in with a with a 2% increase or a 5% increase. Any of those options are available as well. And then in conjunction with that, we do have what we have on each of these lines. We've got some of these utilities and oh, yeah, you know, these action formulas that we've got. So if we look at the travel, for instance, um, I've got the ability to say for that line that I've selected, I want to initialize this budget. And what I want to do with that is I want to use you know, all the 2018 actual numbers or all the 2019 budget numbers or a combination of the two. And I want to load that up with the full value and I want to add 2% to this. So if I set these values, it'll say, yep, if it's okay, it'll bring it in and it'll populate that line for us with those particular values and the increase as well. Now, just to confirm, you can still click on the little sort of drop down there. And you can see, so there's the line that we've basically entered or initiated, but we also have, you know, 2018 actuals in there or the 2018 budgets or the 12 months trailing actuals. So those type of information is still available. So you've got full visibility of things that happened within the budget or in the actuals, and you can still go in and adjust these amounts in as well. So go in, update the amounts as we want, save it, and that line is then saved. In addition to that, we've got these advanced formulas that we can start using. Now there's a couple of these that, that does quite a few funky things as well. So if we look at utilities, for instance, you know, those are things that we, we might budget for on a, on a quarterly basis. So you can see the weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, annually. So if we know what that amount is on a weekly basis or what that amount is on a quarterly basis, we can put that in. So, you know, this is four and a half thousand dollars. If we preview that, we can see how that populates down, down the uh, budget periods as well. Now, if there's something specific, we know in July, there's gonna be increase and that's gonna go up to $5,000. We can preview that again and you can see how this changed. So the first two stays at four and a half, but from July onwards, you can actually add some comments in there or notes on each of those lines again. Uh, just to indicate why did we actually change this amount, you know, that's the annual increase or whatever we want to call it, we can add those notes in there and save that back to back to the budget as well. Now, as you can see, that populates, it's got the four and a half thousand on the required periods there and the five thousand as we go along. You can also see that there's a little sort of blue icon on the little calculator there. That just means that there's notes on particular lines. So if you if you sort of hover over them, you can see what those notes are. So you don't have to go back into that formula editor to, to view the notes. You can go into that note and just view what they are as well, or just hover over them rather. Um, the other thing, if we go to that little calculator again, you've got the ability to say, you know what, I want to bring through and copy existing values. So we haven't initiated the line. You can do it on line level as well. And we can see, you know, what do we want to use? I want to use 2018 actuals. So you can, you can see there's the actuals. And that's the values. If we preview this, it will just go across with the same values. I can also change this to say for that one, I want to use the budget. And you can see that jump to 510. So if I preview that, it'll be 510. In addition to that, again, you can increase that by 2%. So it'll increase that by 2%. So any, any type of these calculations, looking at previous values, previous budget, previous act, uh, yeah, actuals or budgets, we can bring it through and, and update the budget as well and populate that. Now, one of the other features in there, or one of the other ones, 
uh, just to show you what that looks like as well, I can use the allocation method. So we've got a specific amount to say, you know, $12,000, do we want to allocate it across the, the periods? But I want to do this based on last year's actuals. So you can see, you know, we only had $500 basically across last year, but if I use the same percentages to allocate the 12,000, it'll use that values to calculate the new values based on the same one. So you know what our annual expense would be, but based on last year's spend per month, it will basically calculate it out for us and populate the lines as required. So it's just a, a easier way to, to distribute the budget amount across the period based on the spend that we had the previous year as well or budget for the previous year either way again you know based on the the selection there or the source that we, we choose we can distribute the amount accordingly so a couple of nice nice little ways to just assist that process of entering the amounts or getting the amounts in that we need for for budget process or budget period as well now you know the same same sort of thing you can obviously just enter this as well so you do have the ability to just enter the, the amount in there as we proceed on it and we can save that and that line will be saved as well. So any of these type of formulas available and you can, you can create them and bring them in. Now, I'll show you some of the other options uh, a bit later. I just wanna jump across to that special purpose worksheet because these are also looking at the formulas that we just looked at. So, you know, we had a couple of indications there or, or previews there of how do we calculate the amount, how do we budget for particular periods, um, you know, how's that formulated, we can bring it in. As we mentioned, you can still import this as well. So, you know, from a, from a worksheet perspective, we can export this worksheet, bring it back in if we, there's something in Excel that we want to just update, you know, that very first budget, the initial budget, bring it in via Excel. Um, we've got the budget in and then from there on, we can start utilizing the utilities that we've got here as well. Now, just to quickly show you on one of these that I've done previously, um, you can see there's quite a few things that, that's already updated, but our special purpose worksheet, that's one of the, the ones that they're at the bottom, but you can see on, on this particular one, let me just highlight that, it, it is sort of small. You can see that this icon there is a bit different. So that's basically just indicating that this line has come through from a special purpose worksheet and different to the others you can see this one i can't edit on the line level all the others i can still still go and update but that special purpose worksheet is something that we calculate based on specific formulas and you know it gets populated from that worksheet so we need to be in that worksheet to update any values so i'll go into that and just explain to you a couple of things that's on there so there's a few few calculations and, and things happening in there now, if we start at the top there, I've got three types of insurance. And what it means, and you can see there, I've got that same some sort of calculation ability. So the same thing we had on the normal worksheet, we've got in the special purpose worksheet, so we can calculate the amount, you know, the amounts across. So if we've got a monthly budget or, um, you know, a monthly budget, we can just put it across. If we've got a, an annual budget that we want to distribute, the same thing. If we've got a quarterly budget, you know, populate that accordingly as well. And for each of them, you can see that we've put in a, a, a sort of additional tag in there to say, yes, I wanna post this, and that needs to go to account, the insurance account for all three of them. So basically what that means is, if we look at the bottom, there's the insurance account, and that's the total that came through. So that 56,000 that we've accumulated at the top gets posted at the bottom into one line. So that's where we get that specific line that comes through. We do those individual lines, they all consolidate into a one line budget and it basically just calculates and, and put that in. So those are the type of things that generally happens and it's a sort of a fixed calculation or percentage that we normally have. And we can create these special purpose worksheets beforehand, apply to the budget document and then send it out to, to the users to populate the rest of the budget. But those fixed calculations would be there it's something that they wouldn't be able to change in a sense, but it's just a, a calculated value that comes in. Now, in addition to that, we can also use this, I think Stefan mentioned in the beginning, if we calculate square metres or rent per square metres, anything like that, we can basically bring in 
those type of values into the into the budget as well and use them in the calculations and that's sort of the the one that i i wanted to explain there so i've had the number of days there but that could be square meters as well and the rental rate so basically what it means is those are fixed values that we put in place at this stage let's say at the start of the year and then we've got these totals now if i look at the total you can see there it's basically just looking at that number of days times the rental rate or the, the square meters times the rental rate and it'll basically calculate and populate this amount for us sorry i want to open it again but populate these amounts at the bottom for us and with that we also have that one to say yep for that particular one we're going to have a posting so that goes to a particular account so those two values at the top we're not going to do it's just this one that we're going to we're in a process and that goes to the rent account and you can see where that goes in now based on that we also have this management fee and we can see you know that's a, a total it uses the formula as well again it's a total and just calculate the percentage on the total so basically it uses the total that gets calculated and works out that percentage and that's then be posted to the management fee on this one. You can see that goes there. So a quick way just to get those formulas in there and then available. Now, the ideal behind it is if something changes, now in my case, the number of days wouldn't really change uh, apart from the leap years, but square metrics or the rate might change. So the square metrics remain the same but the rate will change so we can just come in update the rate and everything that's adjacent to that amount or to that rate will then be calculated again and, and change so if we look at this one and we say you know what we'll change this rate and again we can we can just do we update that rate so before i update that remember that's 950 We've got those totals and we've got those totals. So if I save this one going through, you know, the totals will update, the management fee will update, and we've got new values that's calculated and that will be posted to our, our different accounts in there as well. So it's a, these special SPWs that we have, special purpose worksheets, it's just the easy way to, to have these fixed formulas um, that we apply to each budget. And then if there's any changes, it's one change and it applies to different budget lines as well. So just open up the mind there, think of scenarios that we can use in that, that section then as well. Now, once we're done with any of this, we can post that to our worksheet. You can see some of the options there at the bottom as well. We can load prior year SPW. So if we created one for the prior year, the same thing is loaded. We load it in again, we change the rate for the new year, and we post that to the worksheet. So it just enhances the process and the budgeting process there to make it a lot quicker. So I'll post this one. Yep, that's all done. And if we go back to our worksheet, you know, those new totals would be affected there as well. So you can see there's the $30,000, $31,000 that we, we brought in as well. And again, I can't change that. Only, only the things where it's not calculated from the SPW, will be available to be changed in that section okay so that's basically the the concept on the worksheets and what's available there so the the biggest thing there is it facilitates that process of getting the budgeted values and pushing this out to your budget holders so it's not a full finance or admin task we send it out to the budget holders they're responsible for it they calculate it once everything is calculated they've got this option to you know obviously save the worksheet for one when they're still working on it but they've got that submit worksheet so it gives them the ability to submit the worksheet to say yep we've done with the budget at this stage it comes back to the approver and we can either you know send it back to them or we can finalize it lock it and then uh, update that to stage in fact in that sense so if they submit it in there's a there's a freeze option as well so we can freeze the budgets as well you know once it's committed and approved we generally lock these budgets so you won't be able to change them you can always as we see use them copy them you know create a new new budget version or a new forecast from them and then have that available as well coming back to intact and compare that actual to budgets basically as well so a number of things there just to keep in mind now 
some of the other lines in there, especially around salaries and wages, employee benefits, those type of things is probably not things that, um, you know, if I just highlight a few of them, those are things that you, know, you, you might not always have available to to these budget holders. You know, it's something that we, from a management perspective, know what, what those salaries and wages are and we can budget for them. And it's something that we want to push down to the worksheet already so they can populate the rest of the budget, but the salary and wages and bonuses and super and everything is populated already. Now we use our personnel budgeting for that. So when we look at personnel budgeting, there's quite a few things that we can achieve on this one. So you can see when I open this up, we've got scenarios there. We've got employees, pay types, position types, carriages and allocation. So we'll, we'll touch on each of them just quickly. Uh, and then we'll go through the process of how we bring them together and how we get it back to our budget sheet as well. Now, this section specifically is also just associated to specific users. Um, so not everyone's got access to that. So keep in mind, yep, it is still confidential. It is something that we can restrict via security as well. Now, firstly, we can set up employees. Now, when we set up an employee, uh, it's basically just, you know, what is their start date, any coverages that they might have in there, um, create all those employee records. So it is something, you know, that we just link in and just make sure that we know which employees we've got. So I've only set up two just as an example. Then from a pay type perspective, you can see and add multiple pay types in there for each of the sections that we need to populate on any, any salary that we budget for, we can bring it in. So we've got normal weekly salaries, we've got wages, you know, monthly one, we've got bonuses in there. Maybe there's a company contribution for, for health benefits, we've got super in there, you know, leave accruals, anything that you wanna need to budget for from a pay perspective, you can bring that in. And then part of this you can also see is we populate that salary account or the account that it goes to, not necessarily salary. But in, in that particular one that I chose there initially is, you know, that's a weekly salary. It goes to my salary and wages account. Is it taxable? What's the categories? What's the start dates? And then if there's anything dependent on it. So you can see based on, on this particular one, I've got bonuses as a percentage and I've got super as a percentage. And those number of things is, is calculated based on that base salary that we budget for this particular person and then as well or for but in this case this particular pay type all right so that's quite important to to have those in there get all the pay types in make sure they work uh, there's a number of positions that we can create so again it's basically just a position that, that we can group employees and managers in for instance and that's linked to these coverages as well so we can say you know what the coverage is for a particular employee or a, or a manager the other important one is if there's allocation, so if you've got an employee that works across multiple projects in my, in my scenario, so we can see what that split is. So Joe Black is the employee, he works across these two projects and we just split the time 50% to each of them. So when we do a budget against that particular line, for instance, we can then say use the allocation and split it between two different projects for the same cost center. So it's just to make sure that you know that wages that we, we budget for is against the correct budget line then when we do the, the process and send it down for the, the um, budget holder to, to work on the rest of their budget. Now, where do we bring all of this together? So we basically go back to scenarios and we can create different scenarios. Now, what we mean with a scenario, that's basically the personnel budget is called the scenario. So you can create different scenarios where we say, you know, it's different managers, different positions. So it might be, we don't have an employee for that position, but we've got a pay type. So you can create all these scenarios and put them in place and see what the value is, make sure it's workable, and then submit that to the budget. Now to do that, we're gonna, um, oh, I don't wanna lock this one. So we've, we've brought in, this is my selected scenario at this stage. and as we mentioned, we can bring in those positions. So we'll bring in uh, new positions. We can give it a position name as well. So, you know, any you know, management position, CFO, any, any type of position that we have within this particular scenario, we can add at the bottom there. And then we add who the employees are as well. So if I open this up just to show you what it looks like. So we've got the employee, 
we've got that employee type uh, is it taxable we've got the start date we've got the location and cost center and projects if that's required as well and then we start adding those pay items so remember we created all those pay items initially this is where we start adding them in and we can see you know once we add them in what those rates are so you know for salaries and wages there's a value in there i've, I've added a you know percentage for the bonus and then the super percentage in there as well so these are all calculated um, once we, we we establish what positions we want to create so as soon as we've created all these positions and have all the users linked to them our budget is basically ready now when we look at that we've got this detail section which gives us a bit of a summary so you can see there's a lot of filtering at the top that you can do so we can only look at specific levels there or only at specific employees or any position types but if we just load everything you can see you know based on this i've got three lines for joe black and joanne blogs as well with three lines in there where they post to so there's the, the specific accounts where they go and we've got the the pay type reference there as well so we can see exactly you know, those are the pay types they all post to specific areas and then what are those budgets that we put in place so there's a there's a monthly salary that's calculated there's a once-off bonus that i've put in and then super calculation on top of that as well that we're responsible for so we've got a, a total amount that we we can budget for but based on each line we can determine then what gets posted to our, our final budget. In that sense, I'm just gonna go to the summary just to show you what it looks like. So it basically takes the details that we've got. So we've got a location, we've got a cost center, and per account, it'll basically just total and tell us, you know, total salaries and wages, 98 grand. There's the employee benefits, there's the spot bonus that we get as well. And at this point, we can as well, select the budget and post that to exist existing budget so that's basically just taking the values that we've just entered all the employees all the pay positions all the pay types and send that to the budget to update the budget at that point and then bring that through um, as part of the, the allocation that we allow for that that personnel budgeting process okay there's a bit of a FT analysis that's available just for inquiry purpose. And then we can also look at that allocation analysis. So if there's any allocations that were done, I didn't use my allocation when I did the budget. So in this case, 100% goes across to that employee because I didn't use projects as part of this one. If I started using projects in there, you'll see that split between the two projects that I've got as well. Uh, and you can see on, on this side, you know, what, what each month is for each employee then, or in, position type and again you know if you want to look at something specific you can filter on that uh, to load that up and and bring it in again just a sort of summary once we get all of this posted back it goes into into our worksheets and we also have that summary version of our worksheets as well so basically what that says is this is our budget summary so for the organization in that particular budget set that we've been working in you know we've got a total budget loaded if we want to look at specific budgets at specific areas you know we can look at that australia budget for instance and just look at a specific division and load that that one might be yeah i've only populated a few lines on that one so you can see those are the only things that we budgeted for at this point and we can visualize that on its own as well and just from an integration point of view again to finalize that step we do have the intact option there and you can see this will replace the indicated budget with an intact so just be sure that you are happy with that we can select the martyrs budget we can select the intact budget that we want to put it to and we can upload that um, to the existing one and it'll override that budget and intact will be updated as well Alrighty, and as we mentioned just from an employee perspective those budget holders have the ability to look at reports within budget uh, within martyrs as well but from our perspective, we generally have that available within Intact to do that, that budget comparison. But if there's something specific that they wanna do, um, we can actually look at that monthly budget comparison as well, and they've got that available there. Look at you know the monthly actual versus budget and show the variances there um, if they need to just track where, they, where they're going or how they're going against their budget. 